Hello everyone, this is Chavy Man Night. Ugh! Damn it, I can't see a thing in this. Alright, people, I need to talk about something that is very close to my heart, and that is e celebs. Well, technically, they're more than just e celebs, these people. I'm not talking about YouTubers as such, although they do have a YouTube presence. I'm talking about. Uh, B celebs and maybe Z celebs are pushed. You know the B listers, those ones who are popular in the geek community, those who, uh, who are called specifically, uh, Mr. Will Wheaton and Felicia Rabbit in the headlights day, and also you know the woman who. Once she spots a gamer, will cross the street because she's absolutely terrified of this misogynist who will go and attack her. And these people have come back into my mind because thanks to the good and wonderfully reliable Glebs Lit Litvax, he sent me to an article by the website known as Super Nerdland. And I wish I could remember the author's name, but you should be able to find it, this article, where he basically talks about the... Uh, geek culture and how it's being infiltrated and co-opted by these celebrities who are not really interested in you know the fact that their fans are nerds they don't really care about their fans they're just in it for the money and for whatever their high profile gifted to them by these nerds gives to them so they can you know spread their agenda and this in turn in affects nerds well, geek culture, shall we say, rep reputation amongst wider society. Because as we see, these people are constantly, constantly told by the media to give them their views on the community and what's happening in the community. And we've often seen time and time and time again that these people know nothing about some of the basic massive communities that they're supposed to be a part of. Like, let's take, for example, Joss Whedon, my mortal enemy. You know, the one whom I made four videos on. He's that bad. He was asked about video games. This is a director. This is a film director and a TV producer who basically has been asked by the media to give his opinion on video games. And lo and behold, he knows fuck all about video games, otherwise he would have not compared the entire gaming community, apart from his uh, social justice friends, to the KKK. Or really more specifically, he was trying to pin Gamergate or something like the KKK, but as we know, really, he meant all of gamers. He meant all gamers, because, you know, we're just wailing hyper-consumers to these people. And then we have Will Wheaton and Felicia Day, who are also of this social justice of agenda who will be asked to speak about things that they do not know about. What does Will Wheaton know about modern nerd culture? Nothing at all. He doesn't really care. He's just in it for the shekels. They're all in it for the shekels. They have found something that they can latch onto and make a load of money because now it's gone mainstream. Nerd culture used to be something that was, you know, even in the 80s, despite all these films that were coming out, you know, like I'm trying to remember them now. I guess, is it Mad Science? Mad Science, something like that? Uh, Revenge of the Nerds, etc. Things like that. Despite that, it was still very much a niche market, a very underground community where they mostly played, at least in that time, video games and Dungeons and & Dragons and tabletop games and all sorts of things. And eventually, around, say, 2000, maybe, 2005, in the last 15 years, it's grown up. It, it suddenly uh, has been marketed and exploded into the mainstream somehow, and now it's fashionable to be a geek. It certainly wasn't when I was a kid in the er late 90s and the early to mid 2000s. I, mean, I was bullied for being a nerd. It's only recently that it started to become a massive phenomenon, you know, with Comic Con and. E3 and all those things, you know, they didn't never used to be as big as they are now, and it's coincided, I'm not trying to say it's correlation equals causation, but it's coincided with the rise of the video game industry, and the decline of Hollywood and music industry, and to a lesser extent comics, although comics have also benefited from this because 
now some of the top grossing games games and films are based on comic book heroes but with that comes parasites and look at none other than these people who i mentioned before these people will spread their agenda because they have now been given such inflated egos by all this e-celeb fame that they've got it is mostly electronic it if you were to ask a normal pleb on the street who felicia day was who will wheaton was they might know who will wheaton was if they watched one episode or five maybe of star trek if they knew what star trek the next generation and they knew he was in it they might know him but they don't have a clue who felicia day is i've asked people like do you know who felicia day is who who's felicia day because these people have done nothing. Felicia Day acted in, what, two TV shows? She's done occasional voice acting. But other than that, how does that warrant her being a spokesperson and queen of the geeks for us? How? How does Will Wheaton, a person who has nothing but a, had a downward spiral for his career, like, he is on its last legs. This is why he is now an e the These are... The Kim Kardashians and the Kanye West... Well, Kanye West has talent, but he is becoming a bit of a reality star with the whole Kim Kardashian thing. These are the, these are the Kardashians, the Paris Hiltons of the geek world. And they have far too much of a good reputation and power than they deserve. What exactly have they done in their careers to warrant such an important public presence in these communities in in geek culture at large because oh, whenever they talk about geek culture it's nothing but disdain as if oh we could be better but there's a misogynist twist to everything oh uh, i need money please take me to these conventions and i will charge so much but you will benefit nicely let's not forget that these people will censor other people from going to conventions we've seen it we've seen it Read the article, people, and you can see all these things that they tried to do. These people have now a cult of personality. And I know this is completely unscripted, so I will be waffling on a little bit. I'll be ending it soon. They have a cult of personality where the basic, you know, nerd, you know, the, where only the hipsters and the posers and those new to geek culture will follow them blindly. And they do nothing but leech off and give nothing in return. They, what have they given to us? Nothing. They don't create good content. What has Felicia Day done in the last couple of years other than go to conventions and be a personality? That's all they do. They're just personalities. They're professional personalities. And when you quiz them on nerd stuff, they always end up shitting on us at one time or another. What kind of spokesperson who's supposed to represent us and defend us from the mainstream shits on us and says that they have to cross the street when they see gamers or defends Anita Sarkeesian in an article where despite 80% of people voting her not to be listed as the Times most powerful people says that she's always been a gamer when we know she never has and anyway I think I will start uh, repeating myself if I start if I carry on with this so this has been Charming Man 93 and I'll see you all later